Hey there everybody, I'm Daniel and I work as a freelance illustrator and I've been a contractor on this game called Lens Island since 2020 where I painted a lot of the icons and loading screens but the most well-known image I've done is this splash illustration. In this video I want to walk you through how I repainted the splash art for the upcoming update in December named Lens Island Uncharted Waters. Let's get into it. At the very beginning of the project, I started off by asking my art director Julian for some adjectives that would jog some ideas in my head. Now the reason I asked for words was because it would help me think about how I wanted to approach the composition and spark my imagination before looking at references. So he said things like epic, unlimited adventure, open world, many possibilities, and start of a journey. This gave me a sense of what we were trying to go for and so I started thinking about how we could depict this. I knew that off the bat, the horizon line in my perspective would be fairly high in the image to showcase more of the islands and ocean, and since the new update is adding a ton of new biomes as well as procedural generation, I needed to make it clear that exploration was a huge focus. When I started, I also had some very strict guidelines to follow as far as resolution went. The image needed to be cropped in a few different formats, so on Steam, there's a box cover, as well as a banner cover, and then a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, as well as the wider frame Julian wanted. Working within this limitation was very challenging because I needed to make sure I balanced and placed my elements in a way that fit the different crops and also worked in the composition. During the early sketches, I had some guidelines overlaid to make sure I worked within these constraints. When making thumbnails, I stick to very loose lines because it's the fastest way I can communicate my idea. I tend to think more in lines anyway, so I start off basic and loose just to explore where I can range certain things. After a call with Julian and Jake, who's also another artist on the team, we decided that there was some power of having Len directly in the middle of the frame, and we wanted to keep this motif again from the original splash art, but rework it to fit our new vision. My goals with the composition were showing off the new biomes, making sure Len is still the star, and also having more of an epic and wide feeling than the original. I'm not gonna lie, it was really difficult trying to balance Len and the environment, so I approached it in more of an abstract way. This technique is taken from Framed Ink, and it's a great resource for studying composition. So rather than thinking of everything in the composition as literal objects, I'm instead thinking about major shapes that can create interest and balance. It's much easier to have a visual hierarchy as opposed to drawing everything equally. So if you can list your top three most important elements, everything else falls underneath that. So Len was number one. He was number one! Then the big landmass that we're standing on, and finally all the islands in the distance. The ocean is really just negative space that would provide atmosphere rather than being super detailed. I gathered a lot of references throughout the project from how beaches looked with clear water, to different islands, archipelagos, to storm clouds, and really anything that would help me out. Early on, we decided that it would be best to ignore reality, but instead opt for a theme park kind of feeling. Um, we knew we wanted to showcase the new dark forest island in the distance, as well as having a birch forest and a tropical island. Sometimes you have to break reality in service of creating a better illustration. After all of this was done, it was time to move onto 3D in Blender to make the scene. And from the beginning, I knew that for a really complex and massive illustration like this, 3D would end up saving me time in the long run, and would also be easier to visualize how things would look without committing tons of energy painting it. For this project, I was also given access to some of the 3D assets, and that really helped me out a huge amount. The first thing I did in Blender was to set up my camera using this add-on called Photographer, and the cool thing is, I could actually overlay my sketch over the camera and work within that. So I built the 3D to fit my drawing, which meant I could keep the overall flow and placement of my elements, but it did introduce a few problems. And one of them was that my perspective wasn't 100% accurate from the sketch, so I had to scale things around and fake things into looking correct. Once I was happy with the general 3D, I then rendered it out and brought it into Photoshop. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all of the technical details of how I did this, but I will be making a tutorial at some point on my channel for this workflow. Now, there was a huge mistake I made that I didn't see earlier, 
I forgot to take into account where the logo placement would be, and so this entire island needed to shift down to make space for the sky. This did end up breaking perspective, so I had to make it work and think of creative solutions. If the entire island moved down, then it would need to be bigger as it's closer to the camera. But honestly, I wasn't 100% sure anymore. I got to about this stage, and when I showed it to Julian, we realized the image wasn't just working. It wasn't hitting the core ideas that we were striving to go for, and so I had to throw it aside and head back into 3D. And so, Render 3.0 was born. This time, I opted to place Len up on a cliff overlooking the landscape, um, which was just like the original splash art from 2020. Except this time, there's a peninsula and beach that move out toward all of the different biomes, which I repurposed from my original render. And this felt really good so far, and when I cropped the scene, it worked. We also thought it would be a cool idea to add a curved horizon on the illustration to kind of hammer down that feeling of being in a world. Um, this was actually pretty simple to do. I just added a basic fisheye effect in Photoshop once I had my 3D renders and then like painted on top of it. Now I'm glossing over a lot for this video, but I'm well into production at this point, having spent probably a dozen or more hours getting to this stage. I also had a lot of feedback from Jake and Julian, as well as some art mentors, but I really want to stress how much work goes into these kinds of illustrations. Don't be fooled thinking I'm super fast at painting, or that it just kind of happens, because there are honestly many issues that creep up along the way, so it's more about being flexible enough to solve the problem and create the best image you can within the time constraints. From here, it's just a lot of painting and cleaning things up, as well as lots and lots of small changes and iterations. Because I did have a 3D base, the good thing was that any changes were very simple to integrate back into my paint over. A huge tip I can give you when working on big illustrations like this is, you don't need to paint it all 100% to see the final product. What I mean is, at the end of a giving painting session, I'll export what I've done as a single image and then go in and paint over everything to stay loose. It's at this stage that I'm really just trying out new things and experimenting, and the reason that this is great is you're no longer fighting all of your layers, you can zoom out and you're much more likely just to try things out. Especially because this was a huge file, um, it also makes Photoshop run a bit faster so you can just focus on the art. And I like to think of this as jumping the queue a little bit, because it's a great way of seeing if you're on the right track or if something could be improved. If you stick to your plan too rigidly from the beginning, you're actually missing out on lots of opportunities to improve the image as you go along the process. One thing I was trying to do was make the Dark Island feel more spooky and so I tried hiding a skull right here, but eventually that ended up getting replaced. And um, it's actually, I mean, it's kind of cheesy, let's not lie. Now, up until this point, I was neglecting the lens, so I decided to give them much needed love. We wanted the pose to feel a bit more dynamic than the first one, so the silhouette was going to be quite important. I added a shield on their left arm and a map sticking out of their backpack to illustrate the gameplay pillars of combat and exploration, and then on their back, I gave them flowers to highlight farming, as well as the pickaxe. Earlier on, I had this pose which Martin, who was the lead programmer, said it kind of looked like a Viking raid, which is really true now that I look back on it. So, you know, we didn't want it to be that violent, and a more epic and adventurous pose was chosen instead. So there were also a lot of changes and things moving around in the image with every piece of feedback I got. And I'm not gonna lie, it did get frustrating at some points because it interrupted my workflow, having to throw away things I spent time detailing. But I think in the end, I have to admit, it did make for a better image overall, and I was still on schedule, so it wasn't too bad. It wasn't until this stage that things really started clicking in. Julian decided to double down on the aspect of the dark forest, and so he added all of these dark clouds and god rays here, which I thought looked great. So I took that idea, and then I applied it to some of the other areas like the sand dunes, which helped it feel more like that theme park thing I was talking about earlier. Everything is super exaggerated and has its own domain, which did work for the image. So, finally, after many, 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 many hours of painting, um, I think this was actually close to a 100 hour project, including all of the modeling, iterations, changes, paintings, feedback sessions, etc. Honestly, in the future, I don't want to take this long for every illustration, but I did learn so much from this one project, and so I am glad I put the time in.
Now, if we compare the old art to the new art, you can see the evolution of my art style from 2020 to now. And, you know, even though there was a lot of struggle with this one as well, at least the same amount that I felt when I was painting the first one, I do feel quite happy with what I've accomplished. And before making this video, I also asked on my Instagram uh, for some questions which I will answer right now. So, first one is Small and Angry, great name by the way, asks, how do you make each individual element feel cohesive, especially when fully rendered out? So, this is a great question and I would say most of it is already decided during the thumbnail or composition stage. So when you think more abstractly in terms of visual hierarchy, those limitations dictate what is shown and where and also how much. Um, not everything has to be 100% detailed, except for the focal points and whatever is closest to the camera. For this illustration particularly, I'm using a whole bunch of techniques from contrast to values and shapes, etc. in order to reinforce my focal points. If I zoom in right here, for example, you can see this village peninsula has tons of details from small crops and, you know, like a smelter over here and a water tower, but they're actually quite simply rendered. Uh, the reason is when you look at it from a distance, you just see a bunch of buildings. So those tiny details inside aren't actually that important and they get less detail. So I'd say, you know, to make each element feel cohesive, you kind of need to prioritize your composition and what you're actually showing. And then as the details get smaller, you can fill them out as you go. Now, I also have another question, and this one is by Guaya Max. This wasn't, isn't related to the illustration, but Guaya Max asks, to what extent do you think it's possible for someone to teach themselves art? Is a teacher required? I would say for this one, you can go as far as you want to, with the caveat that it would be very difficult completely solo, but it's possible. So there are many great online resources out there and classes that you can enroll in but I think traditionally we place a lot more on being somewhere in person, like, you know, a university or other educational institution. Like anything else, there are pros and cons, and learning from home can be very difficult because you don't have structure or a direct line of feedback. Um, having real life friends or mentors is a huge benefit because you're a lot more motivated to learn in a class setting. For me personally, I studied games art and design at Murdoch Uni, which really opened the door to meeting other creatives and friendships I still hold very closely. So I would say it really depends on how serious and how far you want to go with your art, but art school is not entirely necessary to get a job if that's what you want. Um, it's really if you can you know, do the work or not. And I hope that answers your question. So if you're also interested, you can send me your art related questions on my Instagram at danielangart. Thank you so much for watching, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Be sure to check out Lens Island Uncharted Waters which is dropping December 16th on Steam. And until next time everyone, take care and stay safe.